videos is designed to show you what happens during one of the Living by Water Project's home site consultations. We hope that it will teach, encourage, and engage you in our program and help inspire you to participate in local stewardship in your own community. You can follow along with the videos using the online form on our website. The first segment will go through what happens when you arrive on the property of a shoreline resident and how to get all of the paperwork and logistics out of the way before you can start the home site consultation. So um, when you first get to a property, um, what you should do is obviously like park and then what you should do is go to the door, obviously introduce yourself and then make sure that you um, get your confidentiality form and your photo release form um, signed and get all the paperwork done first. Um, because as soon as you step on the property, then like that form needs to be signed, otherwise technically you're trespassing. And the photo release, um, just explain what the photo release is for. Um, it's just to include the photos in the report, and you won't use them for anything else. If you end up wanting to use them for promo, you'll ask them for permission. And um, so get that formed. If they really don't want to sign the photo release form, then you can't take pictures on their property. And just let them know that that means that there won't be any photos in their report of their property. That kind of thing. And then once you've done that, um, you can, so what I normally do is I start in the house after that because I'm already in the house. The next segment that we're going to talk about is the buffer zone. The buffer zone, or riparian area, is the first line of defense between your property and the lake, making it extremely important that we manage this area in an environmentally responsible way. Some of the areas that we touch on in this section are what type and how much vegetation is present, how is the shoreline influenced by erosion, and what type of wildlife does the shoreline currently support? Well, now we're on the buffer zone, so this is where you're gonna kind of have an opportunity to look at kind of what they've done, like the type of modifications they've made to the shoreline. And um, normally they would be down here with you, so you can still kind of be talking to them and interacting with them as you go. But this is an opportunity for you to notice more things that then they might um, otherwise say. So um, first you're gonna look at the shoreline and you're gonna get, get a kind of get an idea in your head of how long it is but also ask, ask the residents. So um, they'll probably know just because when they bought the property, it, you know, they tell you how long it is. So, I mean, you can see that his property runs from that retaining wall right there just into the trees over here. Check for evidence of erosion. So you guys can look and let me know what you think. What, what type of things would you be looking for? And so because he has installed a hardened structure, um, what does that tell you? That they may have had a bit of an erosion problem starting. And he's aware of it. He's aware that erosion is a problem and he's trying to like lower the it. potential. Yeah. Wait, so so oh. for, for this property, what would you say um, for the evidence of erosion? Yeah, minor, moderate. Okay, so what percentage of this shoreline would you say is affected by erosion? That's like taking all of it into account, not just the area. Just the shoreline. Okay. Oh, like the. Yeah, it doesn't look like much. Yeah, let me see. The new Yeah. Okay. In this case, um, it would actually probably be close to 100. Really? Um, because he's installed the Gabion basket, that tells you, and he's he's installed it across his whole shoreline. That tells you that. Um, you know, oh, that's. Just, oh, I thought you said it went further. That way. Right, yeah, but did you look down there? Yeah, it didn't look, like, it just looks held in. It's eroding, for sure. Yeah. Um, like, even though it has trees, if you look at the trees, lots of them have exposed roots. Okay. Um, and it's just kind of like, you can see that it's kind of undercutting right here, mm -hmm. um, on okay. the side of the dock. So, yeah, you can go look. Um, in, his, in his initial report, he was kind of complaining about, yeah, you can see it down here, too. Um, he was complaining, like, yeah, this is an erosion thing that is happening. And it's consistent through the summer village. Um, it's just, you know, okay. where the prevailing winds take the waves, and that's just really unfortunate. You can see it over here too, Laura. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that's unfortunate. I remember when I first did this consultation, I was like, man, this sucks. Um, you know, this is such a nice, like, natural property, and still there's erosion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would say, so this is kind of one of those weird circumstances. So you would say, like, most of it. Yeah. But then definitely make a note, like, um, you know, most of it is affected by erosion, but most of it is completely natural. And where it's not natural, he's installed Gabby on basket. So, um, yeah, what do you think the reason for erosion is? You guys kind of touched on this already. So the natural process. Yeah, what? The, the steepness of the swell on the rain is coming down. I mean, it's kind of happening down. You can see, like, trails of water almost, like, that would yeah. kind of come down and where the erosion actually hurts. Yeah, for sure. Okay. 
So um, in the report, I mean, what would you suggest? Um, Just to make know. sure that he keeps all the vegetation that's already here, here and here. Yeah. If there's any open spaces, maybe consider planting something like that. Yeah. In those. Yeah, so I mean, you could try to give him, yeah, good suggestions for like that area. Mm -hmm. Where, yeah, like you said, that is likely the path for running off water. Yeah, so and yeah. So perhaps you could suggest something like that has a good root system and might mm -hmm. thrive there. Um, but likely he had vegetation there just like the rest of it and it all got wiped out by, you know, just mm -hmm. the runoff. I mean, that's, but that's something you can suggest. And then um, what would you suggest based on the hard end structure? Um, he obviously needed it. I mean, you can even see how, how cut in this bank is right here. Yeah. Like this is much more forward than the rest of it with the trees, right? Um, so in this case, he probably needed a hard end structure. Um, so what do you suggest? Base. Could you still let it soften up a bit with vegetation? Is it soft? Mm -hmm. I'd say it's not soft to it. It's like, I'd yeah, say it's but hard. There's, there's, yeah, there's no vegetation growing on it, so I wouldn't say, like, he's got some, like, sticks and stuff in there, which helps, but there's mm -hmm. no real vegetation growing in mm -hmm. between yeah. it, so. It's hard. So you can ask him, um, do you, do you pick the weeds that grow in, in the riprap? Do you, um, where is this is where you would say, um, check all that apply that describe the property's buffer zone. So what do you think you would check off for his property? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, would you make a note there? I'd make a note about like the vegetation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so estimate the total width of shoreline that has been cleared to provide access to the water's edge for boating, beach views, dock, and other structures. The vegetation and just built the structures around it, so I'm not sure. Like, it's kind of minimal. That's this, like, the width? Is that what we're. Yeah, it is the width. Like, from. I'd say almost the whole. Front yeah, of the, the whole front like, of the shoreline. Like, like, there's no vegetation on top. Yeah, so I would, I would write down the width of this structure. Because, um, like, there is vegetation underneath it, but obviously mm -hmm. it it's would have had to have been clear, cleared out a bit. So I would say, like, from. You know, from these these wooden stairs, just right on the shoreline here. Um, so I don't know, maybe that's like ten meters. Um, so yeah, um, he obviously like it's not like he's clearing it, but I mean you have to clear a spot for your dock, you have to clear a spot for your your deck, your walkway. So um, that's that's what I would look for. Um, and it's always just the width. So just making sure that you're noticing, you know. So essentially, it's the question is like how much of the shoreline did they develop? Mm -hmm. Really. So you'd estimate that, and then what would you do for how much of the property shoreline falls into each of the following categories? Hmm. Of the shoreline. Mm. I'd say about half of it is probably degraded just due to like adding back to it. Yeah. 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 And when you're when you're doing percent of shoreline, um, you want to mainly focus on um, like the actual waterfront. Okay. That'll what's on the water. That'll make it easier. Okay. Well, um, more than. So yeah, then more than the thing. Like, well, but that half is natural. Yeah, that half is all good, right? Yeah. So, um, but it is eroding. Yeah. yeah. So you have to take that in, into consideration. So. Okay. Um, so you could even put, you know, 50-50 and then say, but no natural erosion is occurring. Yeah, definitely. And so, like, no biological ecological function. So. Um, you know, it's not, it's eroding, but it's natural, like you said, and they do rock on a small portion of it, so, um. And the rest would fall into ornamental landscape, or natural? natural. Yeah. Oh, I guess because you're not including this. Right? No. Um, because that, that kind of goes more under the, like, built structures and, like, the hardened structures. Okay. So, in terms of, like, what they've done to their shoreline, okay. most of it is natural. And this is an interesting property because it's, um, it's really, it's varied in like sort of what, what they've done. So you need to take that into consideration when you're writing the report. It's not always just cut and dry, like, you know, is it turf grass to the water's edge or is it not? It's, it's sometimes it's a combination of things. And so like, um, you know, when you're making your recommendations, like he did a good job, you know, given the confines of like what his shoreline has experienced. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So is there evidence of alien invasive plants in the shoreline? So you would ask, but also you can you can look around. So did you guys notice any? There's dandelions. 
anything else? So, so take a look around as you're coming down to the, yeah. as you're coming down to the shoreline. Um, you can just put, notice things. So sometimes they're obvious, um, sometimes not always, and sometimes you're there in the wrong season. So also ask the resident, do you have problems with um, invasive plants on the shoreline? Okay. Um, and then they'll tell you if they have them sometimes, if they have them a lot, um, and that'll probably be pretty consistent across the summer village as well. And then you'll ask them what they're doing with the invasive plants. So why do we ask that? Well, just so that they know they're aware and to see if they recognize the plant and if they are attempting to like control them in any way or if they're just letting them go because I think maybe somebody, you know, has a bunch of purple and just drive and produce mm -hmm. and like they kind of gauge what they you know about in cases. Just mm -hmm. ask them. And if they're spraying what kind of mm -hmm. products they're using, if they might be using the products in the house, but then the stuff they're using to spray right. could be like, yeah. Purple. Yeah, and so like if they're pulling versus if they're spraying to manage, um, you have to look into what's the best way to manage that particular plant, and then you know, and then incorporate the environmental concerns. So if they say like you know, for least if you pull it and burn it, spraying is probably not going to be that effective. So um, just letting them know what the best practices are for that particular plant. Um, okay, so is this beach composed of imported sand? Um, so are there sources of nutrient contamination near the shore? Um, well, we know there's a lot of issues that could be what we have to ask them about what we need to know for so long, mm -hmm. if anything. Definitely. I didn't see any pets around, but we know we didn't have to go ahead and see anything really growing in the water. No. Does no. anyone know the water quality of Sylvan Lake? Mildly She's the only one that should really know that. It is mesotrophic, so that's um, pretty crazy. It's a really big lake, and uh, it's really like recreationally used, but still mesotrophic. So, um, yeah, they're lucky. Um, you know, they it's, it's it's going good, so it's important that they keep it up. Um, you know, being proactive is, is more valuable than kind of trying to mediate damage later. Uh, okay, so any special wildlife have the present on site? So um, this is where you can say, you know, I observed this, or you can ask the resident. So like, oh, you, did you notice? So like I was, I was telling Dana, I think, um, about purple martins um, and the houses, what they look like. So sometimes you'll see that, you'll see that house and you'll say like, okay, obviously there's purple martins on the, on the property. Um, and then you kind of bring that up with the resident. And so then you can ask the resident, um, you know, so do they have any resident wildlife that they want to tell you about? And then also, is there anything that they'd like to encourage? Um, because, you know, as we know, lots of plants, we can plant things to encourage different types of wildlife and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, if they're like, oh, I'd really like to have some hummingbirds, then in the report you can give them suggestions on how to encourage them. And that's where you think about it. Yeah, definitely. So where it says, like, it's 9.3. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just any other resident would like to encourage. So. Okay, so dead standing trees on the shoreline? I think so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Why do we ask that? Um, because we want to know if they're removing them. Okay, so the next question, do they clear away driftwood and natural debris? So does it look like he does? No. Based on what? There's reeds and stuff on the yeah. So is that good or bad or? That's good. How come? Because it does, uh, provides fishing and uh, it helps you with the and it goes down some way to help soften the on that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so um, we're going to go on to built structures, and we'll get into the dock for that, I think.